this is a topic which i hate <laughs> and i have avoided all my life uh, but uh, finally today i have read it in a lot of detail and i hope i i make sense i i am not sure if i have understood it completely and i'll be able to do justice but i'll try my best um, okay so <laughs> Uh, let's start. I think you can see my screen. Uh, we'll first do uh, some basic anatomy. So I am going to assume uh, that everybody who's listening to this lecture is like me and don't know anything. And that's how I'm going to start with the very basics. And uh, then we build our way up from it. So first uh, half of or, or first one fourth of this class is going to be anatomy. Uh, first half is going to be anatomy and the other half is going to be the DDs uh, to pathologies. There are not a lot of pathologies. Everything looks the same so essentially as a JR and as a resident or, or as a radiologist you need to know the anatomy so that you can describe where the spread is because that's what the surgeon is interested to know that they, when they go for debulking or cytoreductive surgery uh, what is it that they have to uh, look at you know so that's your main role is to describe extent here rather than offer differentials because usually there are no uh, differentials as such um, it's not a long class uh, 45 minutes minimum it will be okay so i'll try to make it as short as possible but 45 minutes to lagega realistically okay so a little bit of theory and then i'm just gonna go on scrolling because i don't want to teach you more theory i want to show you how it looks like on a ct scan which is the primary workhorse for peritoneal imaging okay so this is just the basic stuff that if you get a theory question on this you can write but overall for your understanding you want to remember that there are two layers of the peritoneum right so you all know that there is parietal peritoneum which is going to be around the body wall and then you have the visceral peritoneum which encloses all of of the organs so what you want to imagine is that this is like a balloon within the balloon there are various organs which are floating and we have a visceral peritoneum which is surrounding them and this double fold of peritoneum which is parietal and visceral peritoneum then form various ligaments okay so then there are various ligaments omentum mesentery all of these are nothing but the folds of peritoneum right so we have peritoneal lining which is the parietal and visceral peritoneum and then we have these ligaments which are nothing but the folds of peritoneum okay so that is what is the basic understanding that we have peritoneal cavity between the two layers of peritoneum in men this is closed meaning it doesn't communicate down with the outside okay so in men basically what you have here is no uterus in fallopian tube, right? You have the rectovesical pouch and that is it. So this is how the peritoneum will be in men. But in women, because the fallopian tubes have a fimbrial opening, what happens is in females, this can communicate down through the vaginal opening. Okay, so this is where in women it communicates with the extra peritoneal pelvis. Okay, so that is one thing. There are two compartments. One is greater sac and one is lesser sac. So now understand this. Again, basic stuff. Okay. So this is the stomach. This is the liver. Okay. So everything which is anterior is going to be the greater sac. And this part here behind the stomach is the lesser sac. Okay. So this is the very basic bare minimum stuff that behind the stomach you are going to have the lesser sac. Okay. Peritoneal ligaments, double layer as we said. Now, we have two omentum. Hai. We have greater omentum and we have lesser omentum. Lesser omentum are two things. So, you have gastrohepatic and hepatoduodenal ligament. Okay, so we will talk more about this. Greater omentum is like a curtain. Can you see this? Wo greater curvature. Se hai. So, we have greater curvature and lesser curvature. Lesser curvature is our hepatogastric and hepatoduodenal ligament. Greater curvature is the curtain jaisa. can you see how it's like a curtain going down so this is actually four layers two anterior two posterior it folds upon itself so that's how it's described as a curtain so that is your greater momentum anterior to the small bowel loop so we are going to see this anteriorly on ultrasound it looks very nice when it's you know thickened and it's caked you're going to see this very very anteriorly so this is greater momentum and then we have mesentery mesentery is there for special part of the bubble. So there are three kinds of bubble which are attached by the mesentery to the posterior wall. Are you guys with me? I know it is very dry but please try to keep up. Okay, so there is peritoneal ligaments, 
there is omentum and then there is mesentery mesentery connects bowel to the posterior abdominal wall so first is meso colon okay so this is for the transverse colon transverse meso colon you have small bowel mesentery which you know runs from the dj flexure to the right iliac fossa that small intestine ka meso uh, small bowel mesentery then you have meso sigmoid okay so this is what is meso sigmoid all right so these are the three parts and then we have a small meso appendix okay i'll show it in ct just have patience agar pata hi nahi hoga kya dekh rahe ho to kaise samajh aayega right so this is what is mesentery and mesentery ka job hai to take all of the blood vessels and connect it to the different parts of the bowel loop okay so this is a very very nice diagram actually as you know there are so many diagrams this is one of the good ones from radiology assistant where they are actually showing you in a sagittal section what you know each part means okay so this is all that we have to now look at this is for the theory answers only. only that what is the different you know what is the role of the different modalities so ultrasound mainly is for drainage for fnsc ct is the most useful and that's what we are going to be focusing on mri not very very useful because there are a lot of artifacts you have motion artifacts right you can have chemical shift artifacts at the bowel mesentery interface so that's why mr is not used nowadays we are using diffusion weighted imaging in order to pick up small deposits so that's where mri can help fdg pet when we talk about fdg pet very very useful to pick up uh, peritoneal implants right and also lim uh, lymphomas but you may have false negative if there are very small size mucinous tumors and signet ring cancer so this you should know where it will be false negative and it can be false positive in tb okay so this is just for the theory before i go here now i'm going to take you to a ct and describe so that now when i explain you the anatomy it makes more sense because you would have seen it okay so i'm just going to share my screen now and show you uh, on a ct scan okay yeah can you see my chrome screen what is the chat okay yeah so all right now let's focus here no 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 peritoneum deposit doesn't mean parietal any peritoneum parietal and visceral okay so this is abnormal pehle mujhe normal dikhana hai so first let me just take you through normal bowel okay so for all the first years here i'm short sure by now और और आई डोंट नो इफ बाई नाउ यू हैव लर्न हाउ टू ट्रेस बावल ओके सो सबसे पहले पूरा बावल ट्रेस करते हैं आई टेल यू सब बेसिक्स एज वी गो अलॉन्ग एंड देन आई विल टीच यू अबाउट द पेरिटोनियम ओके सो नाउ फॉलो द ईसोफेगस सो दिस इज द ईसोफेगस गोइंग थ्रू दी हाइटस एंड नाउ एंटरिंग द स्टमक राइट सो दिस इज द स्टमक एवरीबडी कैन फॉलो द स्टमक राइट सो दिस इज द स्टमक एंड यू कैन सी दिस इज द पाइलोरस ओके सो दिस इज द पाइलोरस एंड नाउ वी इट्स कमिंग इन टू ड्यूडनम कैन समबडी टेल मी वॉट two parts of duodenum are retroperitoneum in location you have d2 and d4 okay so d2 and d4 are actually retroperitoneal okay so see this this is the second part and can you see how it's coming posterior yeah so this is the d2 segment and now it is taking a turn okay so can you see this now it's taking a turn okay so now we go Go further up, so scrolling further up, and this is what is the duodenum now meeting here. So can you see how D two is behind in the posterior part, and this is D four which is also behind. So this is what are constituents of the anterior pararenal space of retroperitoneum. So we'll talk about that in a minute. In in a few minutes, so D two and D four are what are retroperitoneum. Okay, so now can you see this is the DJ flexure? Okay, so this is the location of the DJ flexure, and now all of these here are your small bowel loops. Okay, so you don't really want to go each and every small bowel, but all of these clustered around, and I'm going cordially now. All of these are your jejunal loops. All of these are jejunal loops. Okay, so these are all central small bowel loops that you can see in the central part of the. uh abdomen right so these are all your jejunum ileum you can see quite a, a narrow abdominal cavity here so all of these are your ileal loops so now after looking at all the bowel loops now directly let's go back to the 
terminal ileum okay so now we have to focus here on the cecum and you can see this is the terminal part of our ileum loop right so all of the small bubble are done and this is what is ileum right just trust me that i'll show you appendix and everything that you are asking for yes so this is what is the cecum right so you can see this is terminal ileum and this is what is the cecum okay now can you see this blind ending structure 